I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another tutorial in the fibres unit. In this particular tutorial we're going to talk about processing recycled fibres. So the first question I have to ask you is what is a recycled fibre? What's the definition of a recycled fibre? Well a recycled fibre is a fibre that's been through the paper making system at least once. But this can be done in two ways. Take a moment, maybe stop the video, have a little think. What are the two ways that a fibre could go through the paper, the full paper making system? Okay, well, one way is the production of broke. So we start off with fibres at one end of the mill, we disperse them, we work on them, we clean them, we dilute them, we get the floor right, we go on the floor box, through the, along the wire, through the press section, the dry section, and we get some paper at the end. If that paper is no good, then it's broke. Maybe it was tested by the internal quality testers and it failed the specification and it can't be repurposed. All we can do is cut it off the reel and put it back in at the beginning. So that's broke as well. So broke is one type of recycled fibre and that's probably the best, most pure type of recycled fibre. The other type of recycled fibre is post-consumer waste. So we've made a good piece of paper or a good reel of paper. It's gone out, it's been converted into something else, a magazine, a newspaper, a box, and then it comes back as post-consumer waste. It has been consumed and thrown away, collected and returned. So two types of recycle fibre. Internally, generated and used, broke, and this type of material here, post-consumer waste. This one, as you can see, is mainly cardboard boxes. Now, before we talk about the processing of recycled fibre, let's just recap and have a very quick look at the processing of virgin fibre. So we bring in a bale of pulp, we disperse it in a pulper or a hydropulper as we as is correctly called. We do some work on it, usually with a refiner. We might pass it through a cleaning system that could be screens or cleaners or a deculator. And then we make a piece of paper from it. The path for recycled fibre is actually quite different. So far recycled fibre or recovered fibre. At the point at which we disperse it, we also use that opportunity to do some cleaning and we remove the worst of the contamination. Once we've dispersed the fibre, we clean it again. And once we're happy with that being cleaned, we clean it again. And then it's ready to make paper. So with the recovered fibre systems, there's no work to be done on the fibre. It's all clean, clean, clean. It's all about removing contamination. We don't need to refine it. We don't need to do any work on it because the people who made the paper the first time have already done that for us. And that's why recovered fibre is such a cheap, useful material. Somebody spent all the money doing the refining for us. <clears throat> now there are different ways of dispersing recycled fibre. There are, as I mentioned before, five different categories of recycled fibre and each of those five categories could be broken down into ten or more subcategories. Categories giving at the moment, I think there are 56 categories, but every now and then they're reviewed and 
some categories may be eliminated, some categories may be added. But at the moment, 2020, it's about 56 different grades of recycled fibre. The very worst, the mixed waste, we would tend to put in a device like this. This is called a Raga Junker system. This here is the Raga and this bit here is the Junker. So what we do is we throw in our bales of pulp, recycled pulp, recycled paper, along with their wires. And it's important to throw the wire in as well. Here we have a rope that we call the ragger. And when the bales get thrown in there, you get this turning action from the rotor there. That will cause the wires to entangle around the rope. And that will then extend the length of this rope. So we need to pull it out a little bit. And then we throw more bales in, more wires are let loose, they entangle around the other wires, and we pull that out. Now, in that waste paper could be anything. There could be magazines, there could be boxes. Very often, there's mag there are magazines that are wrapped in a plastic envelope. Well, when that hits this rotor, the envelope will be torn open, the book will be dragged out and shredded. And that plastic could cause us problems later on. So what we need to do is to take it out while it's as big as it possibly can be. And that's one of the reasons why we throw in the wires. Not only do the wires entangle themselves and entangle onto the rope, they pick up these large bits of flexible packaging and they entangle them and they get pulled out here as well. The finally the, the final um, pulper that we need that we use is the drum pulper now the drum pulper is much more delicate it's much less aggressive so bales of pulp come up the conveyor here at number one all the wires have been completely removed they drop down this chute number two into this first part of the drum, area three. There, there are baffles that simply pick up fiber and drop it. Pick up magazines and drop them. Pick up newspapers and drop them. That's all it does. And we have chemical showers there, high pressure needle jets, maybe water, maybe sodium hydroxide, maybe sodium silicate. And just this action of the baffles picking up the, uh, the sheets of paper and dropping them, cause them to fall apart. In this second part of the drum pulper, it's the external wall is full of holes. So as the fibre moves down through the system, all the fibres drop out of these holes and only contamination will fall out of the end of this pulper. So if you had anything stuck to a magazine like a, a CD or a CD case or some cosmetics or a child's toy, they will come out of this end. If you have paper with wet strength in, in the previous pulper, it would have shredded paper with wet strength. This is so gentle, the wet strength paper will come out unharmed. So for the drum pulper, we need to be a lot more selective in what we choose to put in because it will not disintegrate things like wet strength papers. So there's our ragged junker again. Very, very aggressive. Um, small contamination or heavy contamination will drop down here and fall out of the junker. Lightweight float contamination will remove back around here, go through a screen, drop down in here. Useful fibres will come through there. So that is for the worst of all uh, waste. This is for very selective waste. Once we've taken the opportunity to disperse the fibres and once we've removed or had an initial removal of the 
largest contamination, we may then go on to pressure screens. Pressure screens is it's basically a sieve and we push the stock at the sieve and in the vast majority of cases anything larger than a fibre will get caught on the outside of the sieve and will follow one path. A fibre and anything smaller will pass through the sieve and onto the next stage. There are some screens where you can catch the fibre on the outside of the sieve and the small material that we don't want will pass through and will be taken away. So pressure screens remove contamination by virtue of its size. These are centrifugal cleaners or hydrocyclones and these are for dealing with contamination that's the same size as a fibre. And the way we can separate fibre from contamination using this equipment is because of the density difference. The vast majority of contamination is more dense than a fibre. So we spin the stock around inside each of these hydrocyclones. Generally, the heavy contamination will move to the outside, hit the inside wall of that cone, fall down and come out to the bottom. The fibre and its vortex will turn around and go, the accepts will go up out of the top. But there are also cleaners that will remove contamination that is much lighter than a fibre, much less dense, something like polystyrene, for example. So once we've had our initial cleaning, we may use baskets to separate out things that are a different size than a fibre and then follow that up with centrifugal cleaners that remove things that are a different density than a fibre. Another device that we may use is this. This is a de-inking cell. The tiniest of all particles that we want to remove are ink particles that may be as little as one micron to 10 microns, but could go up to a thousand. In these de-inking cells, we have a technique for separating the ink from the fiber, taking away the ink and leaving the clean fiber to go on. So I think that really uh, summarizes removing contamination. I've put this slide right at the end. This is a disperger. And the reason why I put it at the end is dispergers do not remove contamination. It's important to remember that. They do not remove contamination. What dispergers do is they reduce the size of the contamination below what could be seen by the naked eye. So that has uh, a multiple uh, val good value. First of all, if the contamination is so small that it can't be seen, then we might as well leave it in the product. If it is so small, then the smaller it is, the less damage it can do. And the third thing is, if we separate it out from the fibre, we'll build up a mountain somewhere in the paper making yard and ultimately we will have to pay somebody to take it away. If we can disperse it so that it's no longer harmful and no longer seeable, then we sell it with a product and we're selling it at the same price as the product. So we're selling our waste at a premium price. And that's what dispergers do. They disperse materials but do not remove them from the system. Okay, well, thank you for watching that video on processing recycle fiber. We will be talking more about recycle fiber in the subsequent videos when we get on to stock prep. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave any comments and I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye for now.